carnitine as opposed to choline um, oh. that really drives up TMAO. So red meat and dairy that contain choline or carnitine unless someone's recommended it to you for a specific reason. Hi everybody and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am naturopath Fiona Chin, co-creator of Kygenesis and co-author of the Kidney Disease Solution. And I am joined today by Emily Carhill um, and I'll let Emily dive in and talk about all things TMAO, what it is, what it looks like and how would you know if that was a problem that you had. So why don't you first tell us what it actually is, Emily, because most people are never yes. going to heard of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so TMAO stands for trimethylamine N-oxide. Um, what it is, it's a metabolite that's produced by our gut bacteria from um, certain uh, certain foods. So it's particularly, so it's from foods that contain choline um, and carnitine largely. And so those are largely, <coughs> excuse me, animal meat, dairy um, and eggs. So it's animal products really. Mm -hmm. And when we eat these foods, um, our gut bacteria breaks them down and works on them and they it releases something called TMA, so trimethylamine. TMA then gets transported to the liver mm -hmm. and in the liver it becomes oxidized into TMAO and it's a certain enzyme in the liver, um, FMO3, which does that conversion from TMA to TMAO and then TMAO is excreted in urine um, from the body. But the problem is that when we have elevated levels of TMAO, it's been linked to a number of different diseases. So particularly cardiovascular disease, that's probably one of the primary uh, links where, that people are aware of. So um, blood, blood clots, hardening of the arteries, heart attacks, stroke, heart failure. It's been linked to diabetes. It's been linked to bowel cancer. Um, it's been linked to kidney disease, which is obviously why we're talking about it. Um, liver problems so non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or liver damage um, neurodegenerative diseases um, and inflammation so just generalized inflammation in the body as well yeah and so it really is something if you've got someone that's just eating you know lots of meat or uh, not even that I guess that's that's a bit unfair but because there has to be some down regulation of other pathways for really this to kick up but you really be finding people are eating a high protein sort of diet right Yes, yeah, exactly. So um, high protein diet and because that, I guess, affects it in two ways. One is that it's giving the substrate that we need to create the TMA to then be converted into TMAO, but also because what we eat affects the bacteria um, in our gut and the levels of bacteria in our gut, that there are certain bacteria that are able to um, create this TMA. So it also depends on um, the balance of bacteria in your gut, um, but those bacteria are upregulated in people who eat a lot of protein. So it kind of, I guess, goes hand in hand. And are there are other factors that are linked to it, because I know from memory, like if people have had gastric bypass surgery, I think they have an increased risk of TMAO, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So other things like, yeah, gastric bypass surgery, having a high fat diet as well. So not just thinking about the protein, but high fat diet too. Um, sleep deprivation, they've found um, people have high levels of TMAO levels, type yeah. TMAO, um, and certain pollutants as well, um, which is likely to do with the, particularly the action on the liver and increased conversion of TMA into TMAO by that enzyme that does that that converting. If, if someone's worried about it, what and they, it, they do get a blood test or they've got a history of like cardiovascular disease and eating a lot of meat and things like that, what things would people do to try and get their levels of TMAO down? Yeah, so the first thing would be to avoid particularly red meat and dairy um, because uh, so TMAO can get produced from um, carnitine or choline, but the the more recent research is showing that it's really largely carnitine as opposed to choline um, okay. that really drives up TMAO, so red meat and dairy, um, mm -hmm. also because that then changes the um, bacteria in the gut, which means that you have more bacteria that's associated with higher TMAO levels. Um, mm -hmm. So increasing more plant-based foods, fibrous foods, um, because as I said, vegetarians and vegans don't produce a lot of TMAO regardless of what they're eating. Um, avoiding supplements that contain choline or carnitine unless someone's recommended it to you for a specific reason. Um, they've 
been that garlic, um, so increasing garlic helps to prevent the formation of TMAO, um, mm-hmm. so the, the allicin in garlic, and also cruciferous vegetables. And they're particularly important because they can reduce the activity of the FMO3, that enzyme in the liver that converts the TMA into the TMAO. Mm -hmm. So they're all sort of dietary things that you can do. And then they've done um, some studies looking at any supplements that may be able to reduce TMAO levels. And there was a study that showed that taking um, vitamin D, vitamin B6, uh, folate and B12, um, when people took those together, there was a 60%, 67% reduction of their TMAO levels. Uh, Resveratrol as well. Um, So that's because... Yeah, it um, inhibits the production of TMA from our gut bugs. Um, and then looking at, you know, probiotics, prebiotics, um, anything that's going to alter the composition of our gut to a more healthy um, garden. Um, mm-hmm. There's been, when they've, they have done some studies with probiotics, and there's only really been a couple that seem to have been shown to lower TMAO levels. Um, so it doesn't seem to be probiotics in general, but I guess anything that you're doing to change the gut terrain is going to be beneficial. So um, if you've liked this video, make sure you hit a like. And if you hit subscribe, it means that you'll get notified anytime we create more content. If there are any things that you, um, any specific topics that you want us to uh, create videos on, make sure you comment in the comments below. I do check those every day and we'll try and get back to you. Um, And then if you want to know more about what we do, head over to www.kidneycoach.com and there you'll find a link uh, to our supplements that we sell that were developed specifically to cover stage one of the kidney disease solution. And if you want to know more about that, that's all on there as well. If you uh, have questions and you're following the program, you can hit us up at support at kidneycoach.com and one of our qualified naturopaths, Emily being one of them and Rach being the other, we'll get back to you. And um, yeah, and Emily, again, thank you for sharing your wonderful wealth of knowledge with the all crazy things TMAO. And thanks everyone for being part of our community and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.